proceed with our discussion today, let us recap our previous lesson. In our previous discussion, we tackled about circulatory system. Circulatory system is responsible for transporting blood throughout the entire body. There are two divisions of circulatory system, the cardiovascular system and the lymphatic system. Now, let us recap the three components of the cardiovascular system. Let's start with the blood vessels. The function of the blood vessels is to provide the network of passageways that the blood can travel in. In short, the blood vessels allow the blood to travel through the body. Next is the blood. The function of the blood is to deliver oxygen and nutrients to the cells of the body and to take away the unwanted waste products and carbon dioxide of the cells. And of course, the heart which is the primary organ of the cardiovascular system. The function of the heart is to pump blood around the body. Now, these are the three components of the cardiovascular system. Now, let us focus on the heart. As you can see, the heart is located at the middle chest cavity with its tip tilted to the left. The size of our heart is the size of our own clenched fist. Our heart is protected by a membrane called pericardium. The whole muscular organ is surrounded by pericardium. Our heart also contains septum that separates the heart into right side and left side. As I mentioned in our previous lesson, our heart has four chambers, the two atria and the two ventricles. The upper thin walled chambers are atrium, while the lower thick walled chambers are the ventricles. Why do you think the left ventricle is thicker than the right ventricle? The atrium are the collecting chambers of our heart and it is located at the upper part of the heart, while ventricles are located at the lower part. Ventricles are the pumping chambers of our heart. Before we go further with the four chambers of the heart, I would like to emphasize these two words, the oxygenated blood and oxygenated blood. When we say oxygenated blood, this blood has a high level of oxygen, while the oxygenated blood has a low level of oxygen and high level of carbon dioxide. How does the oxygenated blood becomes oxygenated blood? Now, let's go back to the four chambers of the heart. The right atrium receives oxygen poor blood or the oxygenated blood from the vena cava, while the left atrium receives oxygen rich blood or oxygenated blood from the pulmonary veins. Now, let's proceed to the ventricles. The right ventricle pumps the oxygenated blood to the lungs for oxygenation, while the left ventricle pumps oxygen-rich blood to all parts of the body. Blood passing through these four chambers are protected from backflow by valves. Valves are plaques of muscles that prevent blood from backflowing. There are two sets of valves that work to ensure that blood will move only in one direction. These two valves are the atrioventricular valves and semilunar valves. Let us discuss first the atrioventricular valves, also known as the cuspid valves. They are located between atria and ventricles. Now, under atrioventricular valves, we have tricuspid valve and bicuspid valve. Tricuspid valve allows the blood to go from the right atrium to the right ventricle. Once the blood enters the right atrium, the tricuspid valve will open and the blood will go to the right ventricle. Once the blood enters the right ventricle, the tricuspid valve will close to prevent the blood from backflowing. On the other hand, the bicuspid valve or what we call the mitral valve allows the blood to flow from the left atrium to the left ventricle. Once the blood enters the left ventricle, the bicuspid valve will close to prevent blood from backflowing. Now, let's have the semilunar valves. Include the pulmonary semilunar valve and aortic semilunar valve. 
The pulmonary semilunar valve is a valve that allows for the one-way movement of blood from the left ventricle to the pulmonary arteries which travel to the lungs. While aortic semilunar valve is a semilunar valve that allows for the one-way movement of blood from the left ventricle to the aorta which travel to the body. Now these are the four valves in 3D view. Now what do you think will happen if one valve is damaged? Now let us discuss the blood vessels connected to the heart. We have superior and inferior vena cava, aorta, pulmonary veins, pulmonary arteries, and of course the coronary arteries. Let's have first the superior and inferior vena cava. The largest veins of the body are the superior and inferior vena cava. Superior vena cava collects the oxygenated blood from the upper part of the body and delivers it to the right atrium. While inferior vena cava collects the oxygenated blood from the lower part of the body and delivers it to the right atrium. Now let's have the pulmonary veins, which is the only veins that carries oxygenated blood. Oxygenated blood coming from the lungs return to the heart through the right and left pulmonary veins. Next is aorta. It is the largest and strongest artery in the body, and it marks the beginning of the systemic circuit. Oxygenated blood get pumps out of the left ventricle through the aortic semilunar valve into the aorta. The blood is pumped from the left ventricle into the aorta and from there, it branches to all parts of the body. The aorta is an elastic artery. When the left ventricle contracts to force blood into the aorta, the aorta expands. This stretching gives the potential energy that will help maintain blood pressure during diastole. Next, we have pulmonary arteries which is the only arteries that carries the oxygenated blood. The right pulmonary artery carries the blood to the right lung while the left pulmonary artery carries the blood to the left lung. Next is coronary arteries. There are two main coronary arteries, the right coronary artery and the left coronary artery. Both of these arteries originate from the beginning root of the aorta, immediately above the aortic valve. The coronary artery supplies oxygenated blood to the heart. Now here are the parts of the heart. Now let us discuss the blood flows through the heart. It will start from the superior and inferior vena cava that collects the oxygenated blood and delivers it to the right atrium. Once the blood enters the right atrium, the tricuspid valve will open. Then the blood will now flow to the right ventricle as the tricuspid valve closes to prevent blood from backflowing. The right ventricle will pump blood to the lungs for oxygenation. As the right ventricle pumps blood, the pulmonary valve will open and the blood will now flow from pulmonary trunk to pulmonary arteries. Pulmonary arteries will deliver the oxygenated blood to the capillaries in the alveoli of the lungs for oxygenation. Once the blood becomes oxygenated, it will flow to pulmonary veins. The pulmonary veins will deliver oxygenated blood to the left atrium. Once left atrium receives oxygenated blood, the bicuspid bulb or mitral valve will open. Then the blood will now flow to the left ventricle. As the left ventricle pumps blood, the aortic valve will open. Then the blood will now flow to the aorta. Then the aorta will deliver oxygenated blood to all parts of the body. The cardiovascular system circulates blood around two loops, pulmonary circulation and the systemic circulation. Now let us focus first on the pulmonary circulation. Pulmonary circulation brings blood from the heart to the lungs and then back to the heart. While in systemic circulation, its function is to bring blood from the heart to all parts of the body except the lungs and then back to the heart. To summarize, 
In pulmonary circulation, the oxygenated blood travels from the heart to the lungs to gain oxygen and get rid of carbon dioxide before returning to the heart. In contrast, in systemic circulation, oxygenated blood is pumped from the heart to the body and then the oxygenated blood is returned back to the heart. How does the respiratory system and circulatory system work together? Now, for trivia, do you know what is the sounds of our heart? The sounds of our heart is lub dub. The first sound is lub. This is the sound of the mitral and tricuspid valve closing as the heart starts to contract. The second sound is dub, which is the sound of aortic and pulmonary valves closing at the end of the contract. So that's it. See you in our next lesson. And if you are new to my channel, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification so that you will be notified for more videos like this.